In problem 4.1.14, we're finding the purchase price of a bond in order to realize a certain given yield after taxes are paid at redemption. When a certain type of bond matures, in other words, at redemption, the bondholder is subject to a tax to the government, 25% of the amount of discount at which he bought the bond. The face value of this bond is 1000 so evidently that means the bondholder is going to pay less than 1000 for the bond at discount. If, for example, the bondholder paid 900 the amount of discount would be 100 and the amount of taxes would be 25 The bond has annually paid coupons, 4% annually paid coupons, so 4% of 1000 is 40 The coupons will be of amount 40 once per year. It's redeemable at par, at face value, you will get 1000 in 10 years. There's no tax on the coupons, you don't have to worry about that. The question is what price should the purchaser pay to realize an effective annual yield of 5% after taxes? All right, we can solve this pretty easily with just one timeline where these times are in years, not half years. 10 years. Coupon amount is 4% of 1,000 is 40. So you've got these coupons, 10 of them. You've got the redemption amount at time 10, which is 1,000, redeemable at par. And then you have the taxes, which you can just think of as a negative quantity. And the price at time zero is going to be the present value of all these things, including the taxes as a negative quantity. So the taxes, if P is your unknown price that you want to know, the taxes are going to be on the amount of discount, which is 1,000 minus P. They are 25% of that. Think of that as a negative quantity that gets added as a negative quantity or subtracted, subtracted if you thought of it as a positive quantity. So the price will be the present value of all this. You've got the coupons, 40A10.05. This yield is 5%. That's an annual yield. You do not have to divide it by 2 because the coupons are paid annually and this is 10 years here. You've got the 1,000, the redemption value, times V to the 10th, where this V is for 0 0.05. Then you've got the taxes, subtract 1,000 minus P times 0.25. That needs to go back to time zero as well. Multiply that by V to the 10th, where this V again is for 0 0.05. So there's the equation to solve for P to solve the problem. Uh, it's really a linear equation in P, so it's not too hard in principle to solve here. We just have to figure out these numbers. Let's figure out this first. 1.05 reciprocal to the 10th power, subtract from 1, divide by 0 0.05, times 40. 308.87 is this number. I'll store that in register 1. On to this one. 1.05 reciprocal to the 10th power times 1,000. Let me just go ahead and add that to what's in register 1 right away. Plus recall 1. These two things right here are 922.78. I'll carry more decimal places, 0.78265. Then with what I have here, 1,000 times 0 0.25 is 250. I get a minus 250 V to the 10th. And then two minus signs make a plus. I get a plus uh, 0.25 V to the 10th times P, the unknown P. Let's go ahead and figure out what this is and subtract it from the 922. Let me store the 922 now in register 1. 1.05 reciprocal to the 10th power times 250 needs to get subtracted from what's in register 1. So this all now becomes 769.30434, let's say. I will now store that in register 1 again. Let's figure out this now. 
1.05 reciprocal to the 10th power times 0.25. That is the coefficient of P. I won't bother writing it down. You can write it down if you like. I will store that in register zero. Well, actually, that's, I'm going to need to subtract it from both sides. And the coefficient of P here is one. So I need to subtract this from one. Store that in register zero. The final answer is I'm, I've got 0.84652 times P equals this. I need to take this, which was in register 1, and divide it by this. Or I can just take the reciprocal of this and multiply it by what was in register 1. There we go. The final answer for the price is 908.78, and that is correct. Okay, so that would be the price when you take taxes into account.